being on the road with Alanis Morissette was a big highlight. Mm -hmm. That was like a big moment. Hi, welcome to Door to Door with your host, me, Judy Stakey. Join me as I travel all over interviewing songwriters about their process. Hi, I'm sitting here today with the very talented Gabriel Mann, producer, musician, songwriter, composer. He also has his own band called The Rescues and writes so many songs for film and TV and video games. He's most recently been composing music for the TV hit show, Modern Family. Thanks for sitting down with me today. My pleasure. <laughs> what are you up to these days? Besides uh, Modern Family. Well, I have four other TV shows that I write music oh for. Um, one of them is a drama. It's called Rectify. It's a great show that no mm -hmm. one watches on uh, the Sundance channel. Maybe um, now they will. <laughs> the, the, we, I think we have a 0.0, .0 rating. But... It's a wonderful show, and we just got picked up for a third season. It's like an incredible, That's beautiful great. show, and everyone should watch it. And uh, the music is just wonderful. <laughs> uh, and then I have a new, I have two new shows. Um, one is called Marry Me, and the other one is called okay. The McCarthys. And I only do things that start with the letter M. <laughs> That's my, right. these yeah. are the M years. The M years. And then I have another show on TV Land called The X's, which has got, which is now doing its fourth season. So, I have some. They're like some hit shows, even I though like no one's heard of. See a little the trend X's. going on here. Yeah, that's good. It's Fantastic. Good. And the, the these new shows look very promising. Anyway, so I do. I'm doing a lot of that right. writing music for television shows. That is my main deal. I come into work every day. I write music. And it's wonderful. And then I do a lot of songs for, my main songwriting happens for uh, Mattel. I do tons of songs for Mattel. I don't know if you know this at all. I do That's fantastic. songs wow. for Hot Wheels, wrestling, Barbie, <laughs> uh, like everything. Monster High, all, everything that, that it's Mattel makes. a great little makes, niche to get into. It's fascinating. Yeah. And um, I've been doing that for like seven years. The first one I did was with Amy Powers oh, yeah. and Jeannie Lurie. And, um, and since then I've just, I've, I also do a lot of scoring for them for various things. Anyway, cool. that's basically what's going on. And then I do a lot of other like random other things here In your spare time. In my spare time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, getting down to questions. Okay. Okay, how did we meet? We met at the ASCAP uh, Lester Sills songwriter workshop. We did. Yeah. I don't remember what year it was, but it was a while ago. It's like 2005, I believe. That sounds I, right. I believe, yes. I co-led it with Brendan Oakland that year. Yes, it was great, awesome. Great class. Such really a great, great class. class. And it was, um, it was wonderful. It was a really, it was, I sort of felt like the old man then, and now I'm like super the old man. And, uh, but the, it was great. It was yeah. really fun, and I met a lot of people there that I still am friends with yeah. today. Well, you and David Choi were in the mm -hmm. same class. Reeve Carney. That's right, Reeve yeah. Carney. We have Spider-Man. Yeah. And, um, Be before Spider-Man. Yeah. Before Spider-Man. And, there and there's a girl whose name I cannot Lauren remember. Lauren Jansen? Yes, Laura Lauren Jansen. Jansen. Yeah. I was just talking with Kyler from The Rescues about this. Laura Jansen is a... She's become like a big uh, sort of top liner person mm -hmm. for EDM. Right. She's like a dance singer with wears like long dresses <laughs> kind of things. And like there's like heavy side chain going on. <laughs> <laughs> a long way from when we knew her. Yeah. 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 But then at that point she was just, just like starting. writing. Yeah. Anyway, it's interesting. Right. And Kyler does that too. She's she does a bunch. She did like a song, a track with Tiesto, and it's like a fascinating world that I don't know anything about. Well, I think that they are so great. The EDM is so great in the tracks and the music. Yeah. That they 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 need the top liners. Yeah, yeah, and then they need somebody to sing yeah. a hook, basically. Yeah, absolutely. It's awesome. So, what is your creative process? Uh, you know, it depends on what it is, I guess. The when I do songs, mostly, most of my song stuff now is very directed. So I have like an assignment usually. Mm -hmm. um, and whether it's like writing a theme song for whatever or writing a, you know, song like a montage for a, for a Hot Wheels movie or whatever it is, there's a very specific directive going on. And so 
we usually do research. Almost all these songs are co-written. I very rarely now, except for like the theme songs. I do a lot of like sort of theme song stuff myself. Um, but all the songs for Mattel, for example, are all co-written. I have I, I often do it with Jeannie, um, Jeannie Lurie, who does. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. you can look her up. She's got a million great credits. Mm -hmm. She's the greatest. Uh, and Amy Powers is another one. I worked with Kay Hanley. Um, recently and that was awesome anyway so with various other people and we we basically have uh we have a job we have to write a song for this scene that does right. this and says this and is this long and is and it feels like this and occasionally there will be a reference that in terms of like what they sort of want it to feel like um and we just come in and do it i i don't know I, in terms of the actual nuts and bolts of the process we usually like do a little studying up on what the song is supposed to do like we pour over the emails that have been sent and we will often have a phone call right when we get started mm -hmm. just to sort of see if there are any words that get tossed around uh that are specific to that song that we think we can use then or that provide a jumping off point. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I just, we just like start really fast. I tend to jump in very quickly because I feel like it, it's just not that hard. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like, you know, that we have so many tools. We have like drums and we have guitars and we have beat pianos and you just like put your hands down and like make some noise. And that is basically how it happens. Um, when there's a very specific reference that is being referred to, like in terms of a track, like the other day I had a reference for um, that Megan Trainer song. Mm -hmm. And so we listen to it and then we start making music and, you know, we try to, we sort of do a little bit of analysis about what that song does and what what is the harmony like and what is the sort of groove like and what is the message of it and then to sort of transplant that onto what we're working on mm -hmm. and see if it makes sense. Right. Sometimes it doesn't make sense and you and and the people who are giving you this directive may not have understood that it didn't make sense. And so then we have a phone call. <laughs> we're like, this doesn't make sense. And they're like, oh, okay. Well what would make sense? And we're like, well, we're just gonna like do something. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> that you answer the question. That that sort right. of <laughs> I think having a directive is yeah. is part of the process, though, in filming TV and, yes. and, and stuff that you don't usually have when writing for pop music, which I think is interesting. Is that it's totally you, know, you different. have structure and you have words and you have I mean, there's boundaries, definite boundaries. So yeah, yeah, we have boundaries. I have more boundaries now than I ever used to have. Yeah. Good thing and bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> so if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? This is terrible. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> if I could have a superpower... Well, it'd be a great question if I could actually grant you the wish. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, maybe breathe underwater. Oh, that's a good one. No one's ever answered that oh. before. I like that. I like that. That's You're all I'm going to say that? about that. You I'm going to stick with that. Go. Because it's not flying. Flying's too, you know. Oh, I'd want to fly. Flying's oh, great. It's great. great. I'll but fly. But if you could breathe underwater. underwater, there's this whole universe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that no one has seen before. Well, that's true. Anyway. Was there an event in your career that, looking back, was a blessing in disguise? Uh, yeah. Basically, my solo career, like, didn't happen. <laughs> I was an mm -hmm. I was an artist for many years. I made five albums. Uh, and this is like between 1999 and 2005 or so. Mm -hmm. um, and it was like on an upward trajectory for a long time, and up until the very end, basically. At which point, I went on the road with Alanis Morissette as her opening act. It was like it was like. It was like I had been given the key to the universe. Uh -huh. 
And we went to Europe for a month, and there I was, Gabriel Mann, open with Alanis Morissette. <sighs> that was the show. And playing for thousands of people every night. It was wonderful. And uh, it and I basically expected to be given the keys to the city when I returned that, you know, the world was just going to be my oyster. And kind of nothing really happened. There was no ticker tape parade in my honor. And, uh, and my wife was pregnant at the time, and I came home, we had a baby. And suddenly, uh, I mean, well, something did happen that was a positive thing at that moment. But this is all... I sound like I'm complaining about like a great thing, but basically nothing happened after that tour. I was really, I was expecting for something mm -hmm. great to happen with my solo career. Yeah. And then I got a call from my old boss basically saying, hey, do you want to write songs for this new TV show um, called Arrested Development? And I was like, okay. So, because <laughs> I had nothing better to do. So we, I went over to his place and we wrote these funny songs that were sort of, they were also, they were all kind of like knockoffs of like 80s and 90s songs that were, you know, and it was also, we had a directive. We were like writing specific songs for specific scenes, specific characters. Mm -hmm. It's totally fun, great time. And, um, and we would just crank it out. We'd do like two or three songs every couple weeks. And it was really fun. And I got to sing them too. So they would be on the episode. Um, and this was like sort of my first foray really into television music, even though it wasn't really, I wasn't composing, mm -hmm. I was writing songs. It's like you had a solo career in TV land now. Yeah, and yeah. then suddenly, I, exactly. I was, I was writing songs that were just funny songs on this, this TV show. And it just changed everything. It changed my whole, it changed, I, I basically, let, I had been working for this guy as an assistant like six years prior and uh it was not and, and i hated it i hated tv music i hated everything about it. this i was like these are terrible people i want to be like a rocker and so i bailed and i did that and i produced albums and i wrote songs and made my own records and and it basically didn't work out and then i came back and it just sort of found me again and it's been great since then and then I had everything because then I was working suddenly I was working for this guy doing I started doing more scoring for him and then I started a new band I mean I didn't really start it it just sort of like appeared out of nowhere which was the rescues mm -hmm. and the rescues had a lot of success very quickly and so suddenly I had within a few, the space of a few years I had modern family and I had the rescues we had a record deal and we were like and it was like scoring this TV show this which was a hit very quickly and I had this band that was like telephone uh and i had this band that was um having a lot of success so i was sort of uh, doing both things at the same time and it was a very exciting time great wow what is your least favorite word to use in a song just mm -hmm. really so they're like meaningless words yeah. yep. <laughs> they drive me nuts I, I just I learned from Jeannie. I stole that from Jeannie because <laughs> Jeannie hates just, but she's sort of coming around to it. Because every once in a while, I mean, obviously these rules are meant to be broken, but um, but yeah, really, like you're really awesome. It's <laughs> j like that song. Like okay, here's a good example of a good use of of just. Just breathe. Okay, so that's fine, but generally, just doesn't work for me. <laughs> Get it out. Um, do you have a great co-writing trip? That co-writing tip um, out for for writers out there. Well, I think uh, just sort of getting into it fast is something that I think is helpful. Like as opposed to like there are times when we will just well, we will just sort of sit around and like shoot the shit for a while, and that can be helpful just because sometimes you don't feel like. Sometimes you haven't seen the person for a while, and it's nice to sort of remind yourself that you're friends. Um, a lot of the co-writing that I do is with the same people. Mm -hmm. I don't have like a huge circle, and I don't like explore a lot of new things. All that. that said, I am gonna write with Lisa sometime soon. Um, but I would say that generally jumping in fast 
getting some music out into the universe or even a lyric out into the universe, anything out into the universe quickly is helpful because then, it, I mean, you're done in like half an hour. Just start, yeah. Yeah, you just yeah. gotta go. You gotta go. <laughs> I got it. How do you stay musically current? Uh, I'm terrible about that, frankly. My daughter listens to a lot of music and I hear her singing things that I don't know and I'm like, what is that? And she's like, oh, it's blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and it's usually something that's brand new. I also listen to, I get sent things as a reference often. Mm -hmm. They're like, we like this all about the bass song. And I'm like, okay, I've never heard that song. And I look at it and it's got like one billion views. And I'm like, okay, where have I been? And and it's awesome. I love that song. Yeah. So I, I actually find a lot of music um, usually late, but not that late. I mean, it's still a pretty Your kids are going to cool come song. in handy for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're going to come in really handy for you. What inspires you to get up and do this every day? Ooh. Um, you know, I like, I want to be good. I want to be better all the time. Not just as a person, but musically, I have a lot of ambition to be a better musician, write better music uh, all the time. I want to make it different. I want to make it interesting. I want to make it as good as it can be all the time. Sound is good production-wise, be clever lyrically, everything. I want it to be really good. And that is basically I think that's why I do it. I just have a lot of ambition for it to be good. I don't that's want great. it. I don't want it to be. Um, I mean, the music that I grew up with, uh, that I love, inspires me also. But it sort of in, is inspiring me in the same way. I, I just I want my music to be as good as that music, and um, that's sort of what inspires me. I think. That's great. Then you can be inspiring to others. What is the biggest highlight of your career so far? Whew. I don't know. I feel like I really, like, I have had it so good. I feel like I've gotten so lucky in so many ways. Being on the road with Alanis Morissette was a big highlight. Mm -hmm. That was like a big moment when you look out and there's 10,000 people and they are going, ha, ha, ha. And it's for you, and that's, like, really exciting. Yeah, the rush. Um, that's a big rush. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another big thing that sort of doesn't have a particular moment is that Modern Family being a hit has been like a real key to my, it's been like a, a an open door to right. doing a lot of other work as a composer, um, which is wonderful. It's given you a great calling card. Yeah, it's a great I... calling card. Yeah. There's no particular moment other than maybe when they sort of approved the theme. <laughs> That was like a big moment because it was hard. We I wrote so many of them, and we wound up going back to like number three or whatever out of like twenty five. I mean, I wrote tons of them. Oh my god! Some of them were, a lot of them were are related in style to the one that exists now, uh, but getting that, and then a lot of them are not. A lot of them are completely another direction. Anyway, the, having that theme ultimately approved and then, you know, there was the threat always that it was going to be changed up until like six or seven episodes in, not replaced with something that wasn't mine, but I was still writing new themes like six or seven weeks in because the creators were had a difference of opinion about what the theme should be. And anyway, this is probably too much information, but uh, it's... Uh, Getting that to sort of finally stick was very, was a big moment, I guess. And in the history <laughs> books, I mean, you know, I mean, it's part of an, a comic yeah. show. Uh, Weird yeah. Al did it. So oh. once Weird Al does it. Did he so really? He did it on the Emmys. He did like a sort of like theme song medley. Oh, I missed it. Which, oh, the oh, end of which fantastic. was the one from uh, Game of Thrones. It's fantastic. <laughs> I'll have to go um, YouTube it. <laughs> Great. Those are two big moments. So, any advice that you would like to impart upon upcoming songwriters out there?
Hmm, that's a good question. Advice to them. I would say, uh, I mean, I don't know if this is advice in particular for a songwriter, but in terms of like having a career in uh, music and maybe just a career in entertainment in general, or maybe just a career in general, uh, I have, what sort of helped me sort of get on my feet as a musician was not saying no. I would basically take any gig. Mm -hmm. And that was, um, it was important. I, I, first of all, I learned a lot of things that I would not <clears throat> have otherwise known how to do, like wire a patch bay or, uh, you know, arrange a piece of big band music, like tune a vocal. One time I tuned a very famous person's vocal when auto-tune had just come out. And a friend of mine called and was like, hey, do you know how to use auto-tune? And I was like, sure. And uh, and so I went over there and did that. And that was, you know, I just, I just didn't say no to anything. And it opened me up to a lot of different experiences that I would not have otherwise had. I met a lot of people I would not have otherwise met. And I find that that is, there's a, there's a downside to it. And as long as you can sort of like mitigate the downside, which is like doing too much random stuff mm -hmm. that is not applicable to your situation, you can really do interesting things and wind up in interesting places. And, you know, I could have said, no, I don't write songs for TV shows to David Schwartz when he asked. And, right. And, or I could have said, I'm not, op I'm not like an opening act. I'm, I'm a headliner. Or, or whatever it is, you know, you don't have, like, not everything fits right into your definition of exactly who you think you're supposed to be. But they can be related and they might take you somewhere where you did not imagine. And those opportunities are, yeah. like you said, you have no idea where the, that opportunity That's right. might lead. Yeah. Thank you very much. This has been wonderful. Thank Appreciate you. It. If you like the video you just watched, please give me a thumbs up right down below. And please subscribe to my channel. Yeah. Good idea? Good idea. Good idea. <laughs> and if you have anybody else you'd like me to interview, suggestions, or any questions you'd like me to ask, please leave them in the comments below also.